I'd love to say that was like really organized music, but uh, when Paddy emailed me, what music do you want? I just sent him what I was actually listening to, so, <laughs> uh, oh well. <laughs> um, I'd like to start with like a mini survey before we get into the talk. Uh, the talk's gonna be uh, a little bit about a three-part process in decision-making when it comes to choosing uh, personal productivity software. So before we get started, a little mini survey. Uh, who uses Evernote here? Pop your hands up. Awesome. Uh, who's using it right now to take notes? <laughs> couple of you. Um, Trello users here? Oh, quite a few. Uh, Todoist, uh, Asana, uh, and I'm going to go for some wild ones now that aren't maybe mainstream at the moment. Superhuman, anyone using those? Oh, quite a few. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's got a very long list. <laughs> uh, and uh, Notion as well, they're another, oh, quite a few Notioners, oh, that's awesome. So yeah, my talk's gonna be about uh, avoiding um, perennial problems with uh, productivity tools. Um, do you have the clicker by any chance as well? Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's here. <laughs> uh, so uh, just a bit of introduction to myself. Uh, my name's Francesco. Uh, I host uh, a channel called Keep Productive. Uh, I mainly do a lot of freelance work uh, in the marketing space. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but one of my main passions is uh, to match people with the most suitable tools uh, for their work. Um, and I, I love when you see someone, like find a tool like Evernote or Asana, they go out and use it and they excel uh, massively. Um, you can follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, just briefly about Keep Productive, uh, it's primarily a YouTube channel uh, that it has uh, just over 60,000 subscribers. Um, we routinely do tutorials uh, about apps. Uh, we bring in guests to talk about productivity. And uh, we really do guides as well. Uh, we also have a podcast called Tools They Use uh, that interview professionals. Um, so uh, we really try and curate the best tools and, and resources for people to learn more. So as you know, there are, there are way too many options out there. <laughs> uh, there's uh, 197 uh, billion app downloads in total, and that was back in 2017. And a lot of those are both the business and productivity space. Uh, if you Go to any of the app stores, iOS app store or the Google Play store, and you type in to-do list app or you type in uh, you know, note taker, calendar app, you're probably gonna get a list like this that has a very long scroll bar because there are so many options uh, and determining which one is best for you is pretty tricky. Uh, of course, you get a lot of recommendations from uh, colleagues and everything like that. So there are typically on the white side, there are sort of three main apps that you'll use in your day, a to-do list app, a note taker, and a calendar app, and maybe a project manager too, uh, if you're self-employed or, or you use it for your, your freelancing efforts. And then there are a ton of other different types of productivity apps, like habit trackers, Pomodoro timers, all-in-one workspaces, it's, it's pretty endless actually. Um, and you're probably wondering, right, okay, so there's all of these options out there, the more tools, the better, right? Surely uh, I've got a big selection. I can choose from them. Um, well, that's good because obviously you can narrow down the app that you're gonna go with, um, but actually it can be damaging if you're switching routinely. Um, for example, if you switched a to-do list app, it's almost like moving house. You're moving all your tasks over. It takes you a couple of weeks to get into it. So I'm gonna share a, a three-part process that will help you to hopefully and eventually uh, improve your decision making around choosing personal productivity tools. So the first of those steps is, is the choosing part, that's the research. So obviously putting a lot of time into the research to find that one application that you're gonna go with is very, very important. Then number two is actually to avoid switching once you've got that application. So you've done all that research, you then move to obviously trying not to switch. So that's making sure that that app is the most suitable for you. And number three is once you've got that app, once you've done all the research, is then building a base and actually making sure you're using the full level of functionality. So going back to that first step, uh, this is the research part. So obviously you get loads of recommendations in your workplaces, other people will be trying apps, uh, throwing apps at you, either through Twitter, Product Hunt, uh, or someone nudging you in the office. But selecting them based on your needs is most important. So typically what I recommend is uh, using a quadrant system. Uh, it's a really simple way to break down uh, which apps are most suitable for your work or life needs. So here's an example of those. For example, in the top uh, 
left hand corner, you've got light personal, um, and that's just for everyday use. It could be, for example, for uh, shopping lists, uh, it could be managing day-to-day uh, -day stuff, and uh, this is for to-do list applications. Uh, down at the bottom uh, left, <laughs> heavy personal, which is really strong featured applications that you're only gonna use for yourself. Up in the top right-hand corner, light professional, it's basic, but it has some sharing abilities. And finally, uh, an application that has powerful features with team use as well. So obviously, a lot of you guys probably will be over on this side in the professional segment, but actually sitting down and working out what quadrant you'd fall into before choosing an app will help you to make better decisions. So obviously, you can apply this to other such applications and find out which one's most suitable for you. So before you go about doing it, pick one of those areas and you'll be able to fine tune the apps and the features that match those. So number two is switching. Okay, so your goal is to actually settle down on this application once you've got it. You don't wanna move. Uh, the importance of this is, is massive. A lot of people switch. Uh, I've done it in the past, and honestly, it's something that I know a lot of people will be doing. Uh, but it's important to settle down because once you do, you'll save so much time, money, and effort because it is like moving house when you move a note taker or to-do list application. So what I typically recommend is plan uh, your choice for a three to five year distance. So for example, um, I know that when I started university, uh, I was recommended a lot and was gonna go with an app called Wunderlist, um, which was great for the time period, but I knew I'd need some sharing abilities after I finished university for some jobs. So I went with an app called Todoist, and I've been with them for six years now. So the importance of the application uh, is to be there for as long as possible so that you don't have to move. So what to do is once you've done all that hard research, the quadrant system, is to choose your top three solutions and then to spend a 90-day trial with that app. And the main reason, for example, you pick one of those three and go with the 90 days, the main reason of doing that is so that you can be stuck with that application and actually not spending like 30 days with it, dropping it, going to the second option, so you actually have to commit 90 days to it, and that will help you to determine whether the app is not suitable for you. But it will also help filter out some of the other ones. And the third thing, the third area, is optimizing, is actually fine-tuning the application to your day-to-day -day use. Now, I know that loads of people will find an application on Product Hunt or see one and be like, that looks good, I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, but actually, once you're to this stage uh, and you're past the 90-day period, it's actually important to do and go deeper with that application. So what I recommend is typically taking small courses, guides, videos, to learn the full functionality of the application and to really go as deep as possible with it. And also to craft a home for that resource because once you've crafted a home on it, it becomes easier to stick with that application. So a few recommended steps. So the first is obviously to do that research, to choose, then it's not to actually switch once you've got it. And finally, to optimize that application. Research on your needs, not the needs of other people. Uh, and if you're obviously choosing a team tool, that goes a little bit differently, and you need to spend more time with other people uh, choosing that resource. And although it, it will be uh, maybe offensive to some software developers in here, don't necessarily upgrade straight away. You need to understand whether the free experience matches your needs before necessarily going to premium. I've accidentally absolutely stormed through this. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much uh, for having me today. Thank you to Mark and all the team for having me here. Um, if you'd like to come and show me your uh, app home screen, I'd love that because uh, I'm a, a fairly uh, fan of uh, productivity tools. So, or you can drop me a line on Twitter if you'd like uh, or see me in person. So thanks very much and uh, I look forward to some of your questions. Cheers. Thank you.